Greetings, beautiful beings. I am Taylor and I love birth. Uh, I love birth so, so much. And I want to share with you six simple steps for a healthy and safe birth. So, and this could be, so I'm a big fan of home birth. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, people are so scary when it comes to home birth, but I have, I believe that it is what is best for um, most women, I'll say. And uh, when I say home, I really just mean a safe space that is home to you. It doesn't have to be, you know, where you physically lay your head at every night, but somewhere that is safe. You know, is when I say when I think of home. So that can be your parents' home. You know, that can be um, in the garden. You know, that could be you know at a birthing center. You know, that could be anywhere that you think is just feel you feel safe. You feel you feel like you um, are not um, in an unsafe situation. So I'm gonna get right into it. So number one. Let labor begin on its own. So a normal pregnancy is between 38 weeks and 42 weeks. They they mess up our head and our mindset when they give us that due date. So they think that we have to become come on that due date. And then, you know, all throughout the, those last few weeks, we're already in our head like, oh, I want this baby out. Uh, I'm tired of being pregnant. I want this baby out. And this is not for all, but this is for some. But that all triggers our mind to just like, be over it, you know. So we really could, we really should start to think about the normal pregnancy and understanding that when we let labor begin on its own, so we're not induced, we're not um, up. Oh, it's past the due date, time's up. You know, we're not thinking that when we let labor labor happen naturally, it really transforms our birthing experience. Number two, walk and move around uh, and change positions throughout labor. So movement is key. Movement is key really in life. We should always be moving. You know, our ancestors always moved. They walked, they played, they jumped, they climbed trees, they danced, you know. We are movers, we are movers. Uh, and that doesn't change for labor. We are not uh, to be to be laying in a bed or um, unless we need rest, but for the most part, our, we should be moving. You know, our bodies feel better when we are moving, when we are swaying, when we are bouncing on those birth balls, you know, when we are um, um, dancing, you know, when we are moving through those um, sensations that we feel, they, they, they really are, um, they work with us. They work um, with the baby, you know, it's actively bringing the baby down, you know, when we're moving. So walking and move around and moving around doing labor is um is key to a healthy and safe birth number three bring a loved one um or someone who can offer you continuous support such as a doula um so doulas are this new um phenomenon in the birthing world but one thing that must be understood is that doulas or midwives or support person has always been in our culture. Um, it's what we did. We always took care of the birthing person, the birthing mother. Uh, and um, it's something that we are returning to. Um, and it's something that is being reclaimed. So having a doula is so, um, it, it makes the experience so much more um, sacred, you know, because someone is there to help you, to guide you, to help inform you of healthy and safe birthing practices, help there to help you um, get through the, the tough times if the, you do experience tough times, there to help inform your partner and help guide your partner, there to uh, help with your family and engage in your family and educating your family you know there's so many things that a doula does but it is so important that we have whether it be a doula or an educated partner or someone there to really um, support you as the birthing woman to um, have a beautiful a sacred experience so number four um, avoiding interventions that are not medically necessary so a lot of the interventions that we experience, um, and this is uh, as it pertains to the 
uh, hospital environment, um, a lot of those interventions are not medically necessary. They, you know, make them sound all scary, you know, but they and they and they do them more so as a preventative. But those preventatives, um, preventatives can be harmful to our experiences. Um, you know, so hooking us up to an IV is not that good because we need to move around. You know, our bodies are needing needing to be fluid. We need to get on our hands and knees. We need to get up. We need to move. We need to get in a shower or some water, whatever it may be. But we're restricted when we have to we're, we're, we're have to to be connected to water. Instead, drink. You know, eat. You know, instead of getting your fluids through the IV, there are alternatives that are way more natural. Um, so being induced is another one. I don't want to get into too many, but trying to avoid interventions that are not medically necessary is a big one. Number five, uh, and, uh, and I mentioned this too, avoid giving birth on your back and follow your body's urge to push. So your body will tell you when to push. No one is needing to tell you that. Um, you know, and your body is designed to go through the stages of later labor. Um, so if, when you are able to avoid giving birth on your back, you're working with gravity instead of against it, you know, the baby and, and, and a simple switch. Um, uh, and I gave birth to, oh, actually all three of the babies on my hands and knees pretty much. Yeah. On my hands, or at least on my or my knees, but on my hands or knees. So you could just flip over, um, hands and knees, and you know you could rock in that position. Um, but that's a that's a. I mean, it worked for me. It's a great way to give birth. And there's other positions you can look at them, but um, try not to give birth on your back. Number six and the last one is to keep your baby with you. Um, it's best for you and it's best for your baby, um, especially when establishing that breastfeeding relationship, which is very important in um, just the health of our mothers, the health of our babies, the health of our communities, the health of our nation. Like breastfeeding is so important. It's so important. Um, and, you know, it's so important. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to just say it one more time. It's so important. Breastfeeding is so important. Um, but keeping the baby, that skin to skin, keeping the baby with you um, as soon as baby is born. The Any uh, test or whatever is being conducted can be done right on your chest. You know, the keeping the baby warm is best done right on you. Unless there is something medically going wrong with baby or you to where you don't feel like it's safe to keep the baby on you um then you should try keep or the baby should be on the, the 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 partner the support partner you know keep that baby on the support partner partner to stay warm to stay safe you know um but really that skin to skin is so crucial especially within like the first hour and the first minutes after birth um uh and the baby will naturally all well, my first one had a little bit of help, but the, my other two babies, they were put directly onto my skin and then they naturally uh, went to my breast and started nursing. So it's really, you know, no one had to, I didn't have to help them. They knew exactly what to do. Ooh, they're so, you know, the process of birth and just, you know, um, nurturing a child is so beautiful, so natural, so divine. Uh, so those are six ways to have a healthy and safe birth. Uh, hopefully you learned from something from this. If you like to learn more, let me know. This is my thing, y'all. I love birth. I love giving birth. I love talking about birth. I love thinking about birth. You know, I love all aspects of childbirth. And I want you to, too, if that's not something that you already do. Uh, so peace, family. Thank you for listening.